Hello everyone. This is Julie from August uh, Birdsong on Instagram and I'm just bringing you <clears throat> another video working with some collage. Uh, this morning I just was in the mood to, to put some uh, new papers of mine down that I just purchased um, from Roxy Creations yesterday and she has maybe you've seen the video she has a great sampler kit that she just put on, in her shop and this is just a little bit of um, different pieces she has in the set I didn't print every uh, page but uh, a whole batch of different things to work with so I was excited to, to try to maybe use that and then I also pulled some things from her woodland set which is really beautiful um, I love nature so um, this was one I knew I would want to get for sure uh, here's another one and I think this paper here with the cornflower blue flowers are maybe from this Green Meadows set and um, again lots of elements um, just beautiful different pieces um, to use for me in the background with collage um, <clears throat> and then I also use this is an older set from her shop <clears throat> excuse me and I don't remember this might be Lulu's collage set because her daughter made um, a collage set and I can't remember it might be from hers and so I hadn't used any of that yet and uh, wanted to use that but here are just some examples uh, of the paper the source of the paper I'm using so uh, some of these pieces like the doily and some of the off-white with the advertising in the back came from more of this set um, you can see these are the sampler pages here and these were just small little ones that I just used as accents um, and then, uh, like I said, I think this cornflower blue was from the Meadows, um, Green Meadows set. <clears throat> so, if you haven't checked that out, that's at Roxy Creations on Etsy. And at this point, I haven't stitched the edges or anything. This is simply done on um, just a, a, a book page. I have an old... Uh, textbook it's just the encyclopedia of women's history in america and uh, the library was uh clearing this out and so i took it and i'm using the pages in it now and eventually i'll use the whole hardback uh shell of it for a journal but that's where the the paper is just one piece from that and now i'm ready uh to think about a focal point Notice I did distress the edges a little bit, especially on some of the white ones, just to again add some pop and dimension. And I have <clears throat> a big box of fussy cut images. These are like Audubon images. Um, I showed my coloring book the other day that um, I get a lot of images out of. Let me see, I've got them under here. This, I'm not sure if I showed this one the other day. It's called The Beauties of Nature Coloring Book. And of course you can see some of the birds that I love to cut out. And remember, I don't color in it. I use all of, all of the um, already done images. And I just fussy cut them out. And some are bigger, some are smaller. My smaller ones go in um, a container like this. This is where a lot of, I have another one of these with the birds, smaller birds in it. This is all fussy cut flowers uh, that I've put in there that are smaller. But this is where I put the bigger cutouts, big flowers. And if you saw my first video, you know I, what I like to do with something like this is I'll cut them down. So I might just take half of it. Or I might even just fussy cut the leaves off and just use them individually and not use the, the flower at that time. But things like, here's a fish. This is from a coloring book. 
Um, these are black and white images, nautical. They're from a coloring book, a different one. Uh, but just, you know, look around your craft stores at the coloring books. Even if you're not interested in nature, there are all kinds of them with interesting images that are already colored and um, oh, that beautiful bird that you can use. Now, I may not use this whole outline here of the trees in the background with this one. I can always cut them out, but they were pretty. So I thought, well, I'll keep it with it until I know how I want to use that. Some of those, I think, came from this. This is, again, a coloring book, the Audubon Birds Coloring Book. And um, this, it says $12.99. I, you know, I might have gotten this at Barnes & Noble. It doesn't have a sticker on it. Um, I don't remember now. And again, like that other one, oh, you know what? This is made by, it's called Sirius Publishing. S-I-R-I-U-S. Um, if you just, you know, uh, Google, I'm sure you can find some places you could find it. But they've got these nice small ones. What I do with those, I have a little, a little organizer in front of me. And I just cut them out. And then I can use them on tags or whatever I want later down the road. But um, those are great. And then ah, right there you can see. I probably found that other owl that way. And again, sometimes I will cut these apart and keep maybe this section of the parrots together and cut this one off as its own by itself. Uh, so don't be afraid, um, you know, to, to change the image from what it is on this page. Here, uh, this eagle has, I think it's a golden eagle, has a, a rabbit, a hare in its claws. Now, I don't want to probably put that in, in my collage, so I'll just fussy cut around the talons and leave leave the rabbit off and try to, to put the eagle in a, you know, just a soaring um, placement. But again, coloring books are a wonderful place. Um, to, to find things to fussy cut. And so what I do again, my big ones, I keep in this box. And I'm going to set it aside right now. Now, I want a bigger one for this. I, I was deciding, do I want this particular piece? Like I spoke of before, I could cut it down the center and have kind of two bookmarks. I could cut it down the middle and have kind of two large tags. Uh, I could turn it this way, although my little uh, images I added here would be going the wrong direction. In the background, it, it probably doesn't matter that much, but I think I am going to keep it whole. And the first thing I did a few minutes ago was uh, pull some birds, and I was looking for, again, birds or, you know, an animal that would work well with these sort of soft tones, the cornflower blue, sort of the soft peachy rose, some of the white. And that one stood out to me as a possibility, especially the breast of the bird really matches up with this sampler paper. Here's another one. I used him on another... Um, Another collage of mine, it's on Instagram. If you it's further down, it's one of my earlier ones. I love that bird. I think he might be a little smaller than I want for this, although his colors are beautiful. And maybe if I had done just a half of this page, he would have been probably really good for something that size. But I think I'm gonna wait. Uh, this one again has that soft kind of peachy rose in it so that would be a possibility this was the first one I pulled out and I just loved the dark color of it however you know I could cut off a lot of the greenery around it but the final one I'm going to show you is the one I think I'm going to settle on and it's uh, a pelican I don't you know, I don't use a pelican as often as you'll see me using uh, uh, more of these types of birds typically. And um, I I don't know. I thought with the beak, it just picks up those soft, again, cornflower blue 
and the peachy rose. And I sort of liked him because not every page works with like a pelican as easily. And I just kind of felt like this would be a nice home for this pelican. So I think, you know, here you see his feet. I think what I'm going to do is keep him uh, at the base here. And remember from the other day, our discussion of working with um, uh, the rule of thirds, and I'm looking for my paper, my little strips, and I have tucked them away somewhere. But remember, think of this just like if we were going to play tic-tac-toe and we put the two lines down the center here and two lines across. Okay, and those power points are going to be right kind of within that area there. So what I want to do is have my focal, my focal image and embellishments around it sort of capturing that, that central part um, to help create balance. So in other words, I don't necessarily want, I'm going to show you what I don't want here. I don't necessarily want the pelican there a flower up at the top, um, you know, maybe just this clock kind of randomly there, and um, I don't know, the leaves just, just here by themselves. Okay, all of these elements work with this page, but just not really in that combination, because like I mentioned in my first video segments, um, they're all kind of like on isolation island right now. So I want to bring them in kind of more to that central PowerPoint area and, and again, build up, kind of bring out the depth of this collage by building up the elements around my, my uh, subject matter. Uh, and now I'm going to just use a little ground espresso on this. Um, I'm going just a little darker um with this to to give it a little more pop plus there's some white in it so i'm gonna just lightly just go around the edges i think it just softens um the fussy cut uh pieces so they don't just look like a rough cut of a piece of paper and it helps them sort of merge into the background now I think I will keep the the grass around the feet of the bird of the pelican in there. I'm not going to take that out. It's not a very big portion of it. And so again, I'm going to place place my bird right around there. Here are the other fussy cut images. I'm just going to um, give them some ink right now before I get the glue going. This piece, I believe, and these flowers, I have printed on cardstock, so they're a little thicker. This is definitely a very thin book page. These are a little thicker and heavier, so they will also help me build up um, that sense of depth and dimension. And these flowers come from um, the artist Jen Bishop has... Um, her Etsy shop, and as well, she has a, a, a dot com business called Dreams, etc. D R E A M Z, and then E T C, Dreams, etc. And she has uh, wonderful kits, and they, um, you know, you can print them on, on thinner paper or thicker paper, but she has sets with a lot of these like floral images, and that is where um, I find, you know, more of uh, these types of pieces. Um, a lot of roses. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Some more roses. And there's, there's plenty of things other than flowers. I'm just showing you. Now, that was not from her kit. That's something else. Here's another clock. Um, but I just like uh, to print off a few pages and fussy cut them, and then they're ready to go in my, my little bin. All right, and let me see. This was on a red rose, and I didn't want to use the, the red. It was a little too much for this page. 
So uh, I just cut it off. And remember, this line where I cut it is going to be tucked under my pelican. So it, something like that. So it's not going to matter that it was, you know, only partial, that it was cut off. Um, because all I wanted it for was a little bit of green pop and also to help lift um, my pelican a little bit there. So here's what I thought I would do with this piece. Um, I want this kind of coming up into the top and I'm going to kind of, again, tuck him a little bit, a little bit down through there. Okay. And have the, the greenery here kind of merging out a little. Uh, this piece I could put, and again, you hate to cover up the background. That's always the hard part, um, making those sacrifices. I also thought maybe I'd put this, this rose, sort of down here. That's what it was. I was going to put it sort of down there in the corner. So the pelican is almost like if a pelican was walking along and came, I don't know that there would be rose bushes by the water where a pelican's going to be, but let's just for the sake of it say, okay, sure. They're down there and he's just coming out behind the bush. And so again, we're working at sort of tucking, tucking him into that. And then this will kind of get tucked behind, behind there a little. And I'm trying just to get the balance sort of good. Now, this is separate from all of this, but because it's with the pelican, it becomes part of that whole um, piece. So maybe um, the clock, I think... I'm going to have even just peeking out a little up there out of the out of the top behind the flowers just to again kind of draw the eye down maybe even bring that up just a little higher try to have it so the midnight is straight um and then at this point I might also pause and think, well, I could add some um, some texture or um, textile. So let me get just a few scraps out of here. And now I have a, a bigger bin with lots of, you know, different things. Um, here is some sari silk. I found that just on Etsy. I just searched for vendors who sold sari silk and they're just a batch of different ones um, that carry it and uh, these are just snippets that I cut off of a bigger roll not that but the sari the silk these are all the silks there so that blue possibly I'm just gonna pull it and it's shedding a lot of threads here's just like a little bit of muslin I could, sorry there, hit the camera, um, could just cut some. So let me cut a little bit out. Um, let's see what else is in here. Here I have this, um, just pretty um, ribbon or decorative fabric. Oh, and I also have some cheesecloth. And I, I really enjoy using cheesecloth in the layering, so I might put that in. So we have a few things here. Um, I could also possibly use something with the pink, but we'll <clears throat> audition some of these pieces. He's too dark. Audition some of them. So if I wanted to, I could possibly kind of just work in a piece of this sort of like that maybe um i don't know it might make the beak look a little too long too though uh possibly up there let's see here if i just cut off 
um, a little segment of this. And again, I could kind of um, maybe put a quote on it and put it right there. And that might look sort of pretty. You know, just let me grab, this is just a word, but you know, something like that, but thinner. This piece is too thick, but I could cut it down if I want and use just a little bit of that, sort of the same as that. Let me, let me see here with this blue. That's really a beautiful blue from the Sari Silk. Just, just trying to kind of put it behind it a little. Let me get my scissors here. Ooh, there's threads that are just catching on everything from this in the fringe possibly sort of something kind of bold to sort of be behind it give it some pop um I also have here just like some some muslin um, maybe maybe and again I would reshape it it would look different just kind of looking at it for for the colors and such. And then here, I'm thinking I will probably go with the cheesecloth because it's so light and yet it can add a lot of, of real simple texture. Notice I'm just sort of kind of pulling it apart. Almost it more is like a web there than than just a solid piece. And if I tuck it like behind there, see how it just, it gives that delicate texture. I hope you can maybe see that. It's soft and subtle and yet the background is still coming through it. So I think I'm gonna use at least some of that and I'm still kind of debating if I'm gonna use that blue, sorry silk or not. And here when I glue this I just put the glue down and then tap this into it I don't try to actually put glue on it because it is so thin and delicate but it just because you can just sort of tear around at it and you know, it's not like just a, a square of fabric stuck on, kind of like that looks right now. But I could have some of it there. It's almost a little bit like netting, which with a seagull down by the ocean, fishnets, that kind of thing. That, you know, kind of would work well with this. I'm going to get just a little bit more. And again, I'm... I'm trying to kind of draw the eye around all of this. And I need to, to make these decisions with some of this because the, it, everything will get glued based on where that layer of the image is going to be. So I think I'm ready to glue. I've added a little bit of the cheesecloth up here, tucked a little bit more there, tucked a little bit more there. Now let me just look at it without that. Let me just maybe tear this strip down. Kind of like it when there are those strands, as long as they're not getting in the way too much kind of coming out of 
out of the material. So that could be, I could maybe move, move that a little bit more up there by the beak and maybe sort of draw this kind of in there. Let me see this side, and, and this one is just becoming a little more messy than I like to deal with. It's sticking to my fingers, and I haven't even gotten the glue out. There. All right. I'm kind of out on that. I may just keep it out, and like I said before, maybe take a thinner quote um, here I have these are from um, an Etsy shop called poppiness I'm just trying to grab grab one I can cut it down it's a little too big right now um, and these are all wonderful quotes um, on the Etsy shop there's all different subjects there's like reading quotes um, positive thinking, quotes, um, thoughts, you know, by all famous people and all. And so you get a big sheet of them and I just cut them out and I kind of leave them like this until I'm going to use it. And then I cut it down a little bit more, that kind of thing so that it fits the page better. I think I'm going to do something like that with that blue sorry silk because I like it, but it's not t coming together right now. So I'm going to get my glue out. Again, a lot of people um, will take a picture of the design before uh, putting the glue down. Oh, here I just found, I had set these to the side. I was going to use them in it too. Now this is a different flower, but I liked the green here. And so the way I was going to use that, and I forgot, because again, if it's not right in front of me, easy to forget I wanted it tucked right there and I did have another rose I don't know that I I really need it that that might be well, hard to say I could cut it in half just use a little bit of it peeking out and so I'm gonna just do that I'll save the other half it'll get used somewhere let me ink the edge up a little bit to create that dimension. Some of these I had already inked when I fussy cut them. I don't always do that. It's just sort of, if I feel like doing it at that point, I do it. If I don't, I don't. Now it's covering the blue flower up a little, but that's okay. Um, and then this, let me just bring down. So it's kind of looking like a mess of stuff sort of shoved together. Uh, I may still make changes as I actually glue things, but I think this is kind of where I'm, I'm trying to go. Let me see it without the clock. Oh, I do kind of like that dimension there. So uh, something I do since I'm not going to take a picture of it while I'm filming here is I'm going to just set things off to my right and left so that they're kind of on the side I want to use them on. And uh, like that can go up there, up there. That's more for the top. That's right there. So I think the first thing I'm going to glue down is this, this clock piece kind of right there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use just this is tacky glue, clear tacky glue. And because it's... Um, a heavier cardstock, I'm gonna go ahead and, and use a little stronger glue. Now I want to get it so that midnight is is facing up. Doesn't matter a ton, but well, since I'm thinking of it, I might as well do it. And then this piece, I just needed to, oops, and my tacky glue is gonna run there. Let me get something. I have baby wipes right here this bottle isn't normally 
uh, doing that as much as, as say, FiberTac. FiberTac, this likes to explode in a volcano of glue a lot, so you've got to really watch that because it's also a more expensive glue, so you don't, you don't really want to waste a lot of it. For this little thin paper piece, I'm just going to use my glue stick. And I'm going to just move it a little bit in here. It's a Hardy Boy book. And I'm going to just use this for now. This is just Elmer's Craft Bond, but extra strength. So um, usually like the extra strength ones work pretty good, especially with thin paper. This is very thin. This is the coloring book paper. And so this one, I'm going to keep bringing uh, the pelican back in just to help me place things. Kind of. And then just kind of rub him down on there. This is holding pretty good. Okay. So there we're going to have that. Um, let's see here. I think on this side... I will go ahead. I've got these different elements here. Um, well, maybe I better work up at the top first. So I know I kind of wanted wanted it to be sort of. I'm looking here at you know what I'm putting covering behind it and trying to find kind of how it'll look best for the flower and for the background. I kind of like it there and he's so his head is sort of pillowed on that. Um, and I think, if I remember right, I think I had this sort of tucked up there. So before I put this down, I'm going to just, with this, I'll take the tacky glue and Generally, it's going to go in this area here. I'm just putting a small amount, and I have by me here, I always keep just something I can tap it down with, like a little tool or something, or even the, I like to use just the lid of the top of a pencil that is, you know, the eraser is pretty well to shot on it. And so there I'm going to just put that. Then I'll put the heavier glue on this big flower. It's on cardstock, so I want you know a real solid seal. Hopefully it won't ooze there before I get the chance to get this down. Remember his head was sort of pillowed there. So I think that's pretty good. Right there. I can even kind of double this up a little if I want it a little bit thicker. And I keep um, the brayer here also for this kind of thing to just really try to get it pressed pretty flat so it's not kind of pulling up at the edges, hopefully. And then if it is, like it is here, just, just enough that it, I want to get that a little better, I just use the glue stick. Now, this again is going here, and um, we needed to get these leaves in before I glue the pelican. And I think the plan was... No, nope, that's getting tucked too much in there. Something like that. And then I think I'll put this batch can go, maybe I'll tuck it right there, right? It may change a little from what you saw me putting together, and that's probably going to be because I can't remember exactly just the angle of every piece, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So again, come in, kind of, kind 
to get it before I press it down. Kind of there. Good enough. Okay. Um, now that piece was cardstock, but I used the glue stick, I realized, and I think it'll hold. Um, it's a smaller piece, so it should be okay. And this, I'm just going to just kind of put a thin layer of glue over there. And again, take kind of my cheesecloth here and with the pencil it can be very sticky and messy so um, kind of be prepared for that okay let me see it in relation to this okay that doesn't look good there the way I glued it there I need it tucked in more under here so in this case, I'm just going to shift it a little. Um, worst case scenario, again, pull out my extra flower and, and cover. I can always cover it up more that way. See, something like that tucked behind it. And you'll never know it was uh, being troublesome. Here is, oh, this is the one for the corner, so I don't want to do that there. I think I will use this one right there since it's being a little messy about it. Okay. And this one, I think I'm going to use the glue stick again for that one too. And just keeping your focal point there so you can kind of measure where you're putting everything if it's where you want it. Okay. Rayer in. Again, it's going to go kind of like that, settling in the background. Um, and let's see here, I only have a few elements left. I know I want this in the corner, and I think I wanted this kind of over here with some cheesecloth too. So I think I'll do this one next with just a little bit of cheesecloth. I can even try just that general area, try it with a glue stick. even like roll it. I could use my brayer on it. And if it lifts a little, that's fine because the other elements are going to hold it down. Have that again. Tuck that in there. I, you know, I think, well, maybe I better use the heavier glue. Again, pulling it in you know, kind of like that. Almost there. In fact, I think we are going to be there. Now to put on our pelican finally. And then this will go on top of that. So again, I want that edge covered, that edge covered. You can see that it's coming together in here. Uh, for the pelican, I think I'm going to just, I could use um, my craft bond. Because he's bigger, I'm just going to put a, a light layer. Just kind of rub it right on the surface so you're not getting a real thick glob. Just a light layer around the edges, a thin a thin line just kind of swirled around on there to be sure that it has a good foundation. And 
there, and the brayer in. And there you have, almost done. Okay, we're gonna put that there. And I think I used more of my cheesecloth up on other parts. Oh, I did find an extra piece, so maybe I didn't use it up. Kind of, if we want that coming out a little. Again, it's just a real feathery addition. I'm going to just smear some glue stick to initially get it down. Here, kind of. Kind of roll that through it, okay. Mainly to get it in. You can always snip it too if if there's more than you want. You can go in later with your scissors, or just sort of tear it out. And it just adds that real. There you go. That's more of what I want. Feathery texture to it. Kind of like that. I'm going to use the heavier glue again. This is cardstock. And with it being on the top, there's not going to be a lot holding it. I am going to stitch around the edges so that will hold it secure. But um, this just, again, kind of reinforces it, hopefully staying, staying on. Here we go. Kind of pull it back a little. Okay. And there we pretty well have it. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I'm gonna gonna put a quote on and, and the paper or not. I think I'll stitch it uh, first. And also um, Mod Podge it, or um, I was trying to think of the name Mod Podge the other day, and I could not think of it. <clears throat> now, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. I can also use, um, this is what I like to use on my collages. You don't have to seal it, but if I have a lot of different pieces of paper in the background and in the layering, <clears throat> sometimes I do want to seal it. Now, in this case, because I have my cheesecloth, I may not totally seal every part of it like I would uh, normally do. I may just go into certain little areas. So this is how I, I use my Mod Podge. And I'm gonna kind of lift up um, the cheesecloth a little. And I just take, you know, a credit card, a gift card, whatever is handy. And in this case, I'm being careful around the cheesecloth. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying, I just put some drips and again, go in. And I'm looking at those edges, especially the edges of leaves or the flowers, the dimensional parts. I'm looking to kind of get it around those edges so that it creates a seal. Oh, that just broke off. Well, that's fine. Here, I'll put a little bit more down here. If I didn't have as much sort of patchworked into it, I wouldn't necessarily use a sealant. But this is just a way to kind of hopefully secure it so as it dries out and time passes that it doesn't, um, you know, start to pucker or come up at the edges because especially with the glue stick, I don't always know if I'm getting uh, as strong a seal for the long, the long term. And again, I probably should have done this down here before I put that final rose on. But you know, you you work with it the way it the way you have it and just deal with it or go without. So, you know, I could have also said, well, I'm not gonna worry about sealing it, and I'll just leave it and hope for the best, and that would would be another option. Um, 
for me, it's just, it's most important that especially uh, the thin paper of the Pelican gets a nice seal on it. Um, <clears throat> and the other things in the background, these, these little edges and stuff get a little bit of a seal. You can also do it this way. I'm just going to take it into that corner a little and by the feet of the pelican a little. Okay. And I think I, I think I found most of the areas that needed it. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I'm not sure, I think I mentioned, but maybe I didn't. I prefer the matte, the matte, um, medium, whether it is Mod Podge or Liquitex. Uh, the glossy for my style is a little too loud. And so I tend to just use the matte and, and also notice I had distress ink on edges. And if you looked at my card as it got the, the goop on it, it did darken a little, but it really didn't, if anything, it just kind of seals in that sort of vintage, um, look to it. So what I'm going to do next, and this will be off camera, uh, is I'm just going to stitch the edges around it. And um, then it, it'll it either get a quote or it won't. But it'll basically be done and waiting for, you know, where I want to take it next. Now, I might make it into, um, let me grab, well, let's see, maybe... I might make it into kind of a wall hanging and put like, um, kind of, this is one that's kind of already ready to go. Um, stitch around this as well, put some muslin underneath it. Like if you look at this, I could, and again, I've got little bits of that blue sari silk everywhere. Oop. But you can kind of get the idea of what you can do with this. Um, I can cut down the cardstock a little. So I could make a little wall hanging out of this. I could make it almost like, um, you know, just a, an image like you might frame or at least have on a little bit of a pedestal, you know, when this is all finished and stitched and looks perfect. Um, maybe I'd use a different color. Maybe I'd use black again. Uh, let me grab a piece of my black cardstock here. See what this would look like against the black. Well, and there you have it against the black. So again, those same ideas could be applied. Or maybe I'll use it in a journal or a book cover or something else. Um, that, you know, whatever you use it for, it'll come to you at some point what you want to do with it. So I hope um, that you enjoyed this and learned some things um, about layering and, you know, bringing in some balance with the rule of thirds um, and, you know, drawing the eye to certain things. The other thing I forgot to say that I will do too, once it's all dry and I've stitched it, is I'll go in again with some perfect pearls and just like on these flowers here, put... Um, just some little golden uh, dots to catch the light and again kind of draw your eye to certain parts of it. So I'll be back again with another uh, video uh, in the next few days and um, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.